Hello, everybody. And a very warm welcome to LNT YouTube channel. Meghan's tears for Her Majesty. Duchess of Sussex wipes her eye as she and Prince Harry watch procession behind the Queen's coffin. Christian Saddest Day The Queen has made her final and saddest journey to Westminster Abbey as Britain says farewell to its longest-serving monarch and the royals mourned a beloved mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. Her Majesty was carried in her oak coffin to the gun carriage used by her parents and was followed by her son, the King Charles, the third, and her relatives including the Prince of Wales, Prince William, and Duke of Sussex, Prince Harry. The grieving royal family are saying farewell to Elizabeth V at her state funeral along with 2,000 VIPs and an estimated 2 million people in central London. The state gun carriage carrying the Queen's coffin began its funeral procession from the Palace of Westminster to Westminster Abbey at around 10.45 am. Despite the huge crowds, there was absolute silence as around 200 pipers and drummers of Scottish and Irish regiments, the Brigade of Gurkhas, and RAF played as the procession went through Parliament Square. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex traveled down the mall with a police escort. Prince Harry was seen looking somber in a Range Rover from Wellington Arch, down Constitution Hill and on the mall towards St. James Palace. He then stood side by side with his brother, before the royals entered Westminster Hall, where the Queen had been lying in state. Mourning brothers Prince William and Prince Harry today walked together behind the Queen's coffin as it was carried into Westminster Abbey by the military bearer party for her state funeral. The brothers, who again put aside their feud for a united front to remember their late grandmother, were then joined by their respective wives, as well as two of William's children, Prince George and Princess Charlotte. King Charles III and Queen Consort Camilla walked immediately behind the Queen's coffin, followed by Princess Anne and Vice Admiral, Sir Tim Lawrence, Prince Andrew, Prince Edward and Sophie, Countess of Wessex. Prince George and Princess Charlotte traveled to Westminster Abbey in the same car as the Queen Consort, with the Princess of Wales arriving with them. They arrived at the church shortly after some of the Queen's grandchildren, including Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie. Meghan Markle, Duchess of Sussex, arrives for the state funeral. A solemn Meghan Markle watched as Elizabeth Coffin was placed on an altar while standing beside Kate, George, and Charlotte, before taking a seat in the second row next to Prince Harry. Charlotte. 
The Duchess of Sussex walked into the historic church in a somber procession behind the Queen's coffin. In front of her was Kate, the two eldest Cambridge children and Prince Edward and his wife, the Duchess of Wessex. Inside the church, Meghan stood alongside the three Cambridges for several moments before taking a seat at the funeral next to Prince Harry. The Duchess paid tribute to the Queen by wearing a set of pearl and diamond earrings she was given by the monarch as a gift. She earlier this week wore the same pair for the funeral procession to Westminster Hall. Meghan wore a wide-brimmed hat and a black top for today's service, which millions are watching from around the world. Harry and Meghan have remained in the UK since the Queen's death on September 8. They happened to be in the country for the Well Child Awards when the news was announced. The couple were without their children Archie and Lilibet, who are believed to have remained in California with Meghan's mother Doria Ragland. Prince George and Princess Charlotte joined senior royals at the Queen's funeral, bypassing thousands of mourners on the streets of London as they traveled to Westminster Abbey with the Queen Consort and the Princess of Wales. George, heir to the throne, and his younger sister, who wore a smart black hat with a bow, first traveled in a royal car with their parents, the Prince and Princess of Wales. Before later transferring to a procession car with Kate Middleton and Camilla, with both children appearing to grasp the enormity of the day. The UK's most important church began filling up from 8 a.m. as the congregation arrived up to three hours early, including Kate Middleton's parents as huge crowds of mourners packed the procession route outside and tens of thousands more went to Windsor, where Her Majesty will be buried later. Michael and Carole Middleton, the parents of Kate, the Princess of Wales, arrived two hours early for the service, followed by Tom Parker Balls, the son of Queen Consort, Camilla. World leaders including Joe Biden and Emmanuel Macron arrived at Westminster Abbey. Funeral flowers in the abbey featured myrtle, which was used in the queen's wedding bouquet as is royal tradition. The huge white and green displays of blooms included Asiatic lilies, gladioli, alstroemeria, eustoma and foliage of English oak, weeping birch, and the sprigs of myrtle. And outside hardy royal fans defied no camping rules as people of all ages set up tents. Before the service, conducted by the very Rev. David Hoyle, Dean of Westminster, the tenor bell tolled every 60 seconds for 96 minutes. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest. Before the service, conducted by the very Rev. David Hoyle, Dean of Westminster, the tenor bell tolled every 60 seconds for 96 minutes, reflecting the years of the life of the Queen, who passed away peacefully at Balmoral on September 8th sparking an outpouring of grief around the world. He will say in the bidding, Here, where Queen Elizabeth was married and crowned, we gather from across the nation, from the Commonwealth, and from the nations of the world, to mourn our loss, to remember her long life of selfless service. Quick disclaimer, everything in this video and all of my videos are my opinion based on detailed research that I perform. That said, I would recommend doing your own research before you make up your mind. Thank you. Heartbreaking details about Prince Harry's birth are emerging. Prince Charles did the unthinkable when his son Harry was born. Yeah, it's that bad. Here's why the future king won't be winning Father of the Year anytime soon. It's no secret that the marriage of the late Princess Diana and Prince Charles was extremely tumultuous. Following their eventual divorce in 1996 and Diana's tragic death in 1997, the pair's two sons, Prince William and Prince Harry, experienced a period of tremendous pain. Now, decades later, some heartbreaking new details about Harry's birth have emerged. Andrew Morton's book Diana her true story famously recounted the story of when the Duke of Sussex was born. 
According to Reader's Digest, Charles apparently wanted a baby girl, and when Harry arrived, his father's alleged first words were, Oh God, it's a boy, and he's even got red hair. Were you no. expecting a boy? Can you tell us that? No, I mean, it doesn't matter what it was, as long as it was all right. In the book, Morton wrote that her husband's comments, quote, cut Diana to the core. The 2022 documentary, The Princess Shows the Life of Princess Diana from a Unique Perspective. The film covers everything from her entry into the royal family, her marriage to Charles, and sadly, her death. In the HBO doc, fresh details about Charles' behavior on the day of Harry's birth also come to light, and it is not a good look for the future king. Prince Charles had other plans the day of Harry's birth. One heartbreaking moment in The Princess arrives when Princess Diana and Prince Charles return home from the hospital with their newborn son, Prince Harry. However, not even an hour after arriving home with his wife and baby boy, Charles is shown leaving the house to play polo. In the film, a news clip shows Charles driving out of Kensington Palace, as a reporter narrates that Charles' behavior was unusual for a new father. Another commentator in the HBO doc then adds that the future king continued acting as if he were still a bachelor, even after he was married. Parallels have emerged between Princess Diana's tragedy and Meghan and Harry. The director of the HBO documentary, The Princess, says he sees parallels between the press frenzy surrounding Diana Spencer and the media's coverage of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Director Ed Perkins talked to people about the parallels and highlighted the similarities, especially after Harry and Meghan decided to step back from their royal duties in 2020. It brings me great sadness that it has come to this. The director told the outlet. For a space of about a month or two, it seemed like Harry and Meghan were the only thing people were talking about. It reminded me of the response I was seeing in the archive from 25, 30 years, where, for the entirety of Diana's public life, we were dissecting everything. The director of the HBO documentary told the outlet that he was knee-deep in 1,000 hours of video, reviewing clips about Diana when the Sussexes left the UK in 2020. Perkins explained in his People magazine interview, People had strong polarized opinions all the way throughout her life and after her death, and it did feel interesting that there was a sort of similar national conversation happening 25 years later. The Princess director isn't the only one who has pointed out such similarities. In 2021, Bot Sentinel reported the Sussexes were the targets of a powerful cyberbullying attack in October of that year. The report noted that the online attack had a potential reach of 17 million users in one month. Stop. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more LMT videos about the royal family are coming soon. Subscribe to LMT channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.